Hello and welcome to day 163 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear gracious and loving Father, as we gather before you on this new day, we come with hearts open and eager to receive the nourishment of your word. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to delve into the scriptures knowing that within its pages lies wisdom, truth, and guidance for our lives. As we prepare to embark on this journey of reading and reflection, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be our guide and our teacher. Illuminate our minds and hearts, Lord, that we may understand the depths of your word and apply its principles to our lives. May the words we read today penetrate deep into our souls, transforming us from the inside out. Grant us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to receive the message you have for us. As we meditate on your word, may it inspire us to walk more closely with you, to love more deeply, and to serve more faithfully. Let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We commit this time of reading and reflection into your hands, Lord trusting that you will speak to us and lead us into deeper relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 163, June 12, 2024. 365 days Bible reading, Old Testament, 2 Samuel 18, 19-33, 2 Samuel 19. New Testament, Acts 7, 44 to 60 psalms and proverbs psalm 73 verse 1 to 14 old testament niv version second samuel 18 19 to 33 david mourns now ahimaaz son of zadok said let me run and take the news to the king that the lord has vindicated him by delivering him from the hand of his enemies you are not the one to take the news today, Joab told him. You may take the news another time, but you must not do so today because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to a Cushite, Go, tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed down before Joab and ran off. Ahimaaz, son of Zadok, again said to Joab, Come with me, please let me run behind the Cushite. But Joab replied, My son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you a reward. He said, Come with me. I want to run. So Joab said, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Cushite. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates, the watchman went up to the roof of the gateway by the wall. As he looked out, he saw a man running along. The watchman called out to the king and reported it. The king said, If he is alone, he must have good news. And the runner came closer and closer. Then the watchman saw another runner and he called down to the gatekeeper. Look, another man running alone. The king said, He must, bring, he must be bringing good news too. The watchman said, It seems to me that the first one runs like Ahimaaz, son of Zadok. He's a good man, the king said. He comes with good news. Then Ahimaaz called out to the king. All is well. He bowed down before the king with his face to the ground and said, Praise be to the Lord your God. He has delivered you. He has delivered up those who lifted their hands against my lord the king. The king asked, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimaaz answered, 
I saw great confusion just as Joab was about to send the king's servant and me, your servant, but I don't know what it is. The king said, stand aside and wait here. So he stepped aside and stood there. Then the Cushite arrived and said, My lord the king, hear the good news. The lord has vindicated you today by delivering you from the hand of all who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. As he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Second Samuel 19, 1-43 Joah was told the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. And for the old army, the victory that day was turned into mourning, because on that day the troops heard it said, The king is grieving for his son. The men stole into the city that day as men still, in who are ashamed when they flee from the battle. The king covered his face and cried aloud, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab went into the house to the king and said, Today you have humiliated all your men, who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. You love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I see that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today and all of us were dead. Now go out and encourage your men. I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a man will be left with you by nightfall. This will be worse for you than all the calamities that have come on you from your youth till now. So the king got up and took his seat in the gateway. When the men were told the king is sitting in the gateway, they all came before him. Meanwhile, the Israelites had fled to their homes. David returned to Jerusalem. Throughout the tribes of Israel, all the people were arguing among themselves, saying, the king delivered us from the hand of our enemies. He is the one who rescued us from the hand of the Philistines. But now he has fled the country to escape from Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed to rule over us, has died in battle. So why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent this message to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Ask the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring the king back to his palace, since what is being said throughout Israel has reached the king at his quarters? You are my relatives, my own flesh and blood, so why should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, are you not my own flesh and blood? May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if you are not the commander of my army for life in place of Joab. He won over the hearts of the men of Judah, so that they were all of one mind. They sent word to the king, Return, you and all your men. Then the king returned and went as far as the Jordan. Now the men of Judah had come to Gilgal to go out and meet the king and bring him across the Jordan. Shimei, son of Gerah, the Benjamite from Bahurim, hurried down with the men of Judah to meet King David. With him were a thousand Benjamites along with Ziba, the steward of Saul's household, and his fifteen sons and twenty servants. They rushed to the Jordan where the king was. They crossed at the ford to take the king's household over and to do whatever he wished. When Shimei son of Gerah crossed the Jordan, he fell prostrate before the king and said to him, May my lord not hold me guilty. Do not remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned, but today I have come here as the first from the tribes of Joseph to come down and meet my lord the king. Then Abishai, son of Zeruah, said, Shouldn't she may be put to death for this? He cursed the Lord's anointed. David replied, What does this have to do with you, you sons of Zeruah? 
what right do you have to interfere? Should anyone be put to death in Israel today? Don't I know that today I am king over Israel? So the king said to Shimei, you shall not die. And the king promised him on oath. Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, also went down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet or trimmed his mustache or washed his clothes from the day the king left until the day he returned safely. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king asked, Why didn't you go with me, Mephibosheth? He said, My lord the king, since I your servant am lame, I said, I will have my donkey saddled and will ride on it so I can go with the king. But Ziba my servant betrayed me. And he has slandered your servant to my lord the king. My lord the king is like an angel of God, so do whatever you wish. All my grandfather's descendants deserved nothing but death from my lord the king, but you gave your servant a place among those who eat at your table. So what right do I have to make any more appeals to the king? The king said to him, why say more? I order you and Ziba to divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him take everything now that my lord the king has returned home safely. Basilai the Giladite also came down from Rogelim to cross the Jordan with the king and to send him on his way from there. Now Basilai was very old, 80 years of age. He had provided for the king during his stay in Mahanaim, for he was a very wealthy man. The king said to Basilai, Cross over with me and stay with me in Jerusalem, and I will provide for you. But Basilai answered the king, How many more years will I live that I should go up to Jerusalem with the king? I am now eighty years old. Can I tell the difference between what is enjoyable and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats and drinks? Can I still hear the voices of male and female singers? Why should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will cross over the Jordan with the king for a short distance, but why should the king reward me in this way? Let your servant return that I may die in my own town near the tomb of my father and mother. But here is your servant, Kimham. Let him cross over with my lord the king, do for him whatever you wish. The king said, Kim Ham shall cross over with me and I will do for him whatever you wish and anything you desire from me I will do for you. So all the people crossed the Jordan and then the king crossed over. The king kissed Barzillai and bid him farewell and Barzillai returned to his home. When the king crossed over to Gilgal, Kim Ham crossed with him. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel had taken the king over. Soon all the men of Israel were coming to the king and saying to him, Why did our brothers, the men of Judah, steal the king away and bring him and his household across the Jordan, together with all his men? All the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, We did this because the king is closely related to us. Why are you angry about it? Have we eaten? any of the king's provisions have we taken anything for ourselves then the men of israel answered the men of judah we have ten shares in the king so we have a greater claim on david than you have why then do you treat us with contempt weren't we the first to speak of bringing back our king but the men of judah pressed their claims even more forcefully than the men of israel New Testament NIV version Acts 7 44 to 60 Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the covenant law with them in the wilderness it had been made as God directed Moses according to the pattern he had seen after receiving the tabernacle our ancestors under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. 
However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. The Stoning of Stephen When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Psalms and Proverbs Psalm 73 verse 1 to 14 Book 3, A Psalm of Asaph Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles, their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human illness, ills. Therefore pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice, with arrogance they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like. Always free of care, they go on amassing wealth. Surely in vain, I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. Amen. Lessons learned from the Old Testament verses, 2 Samuel 18, 19-33. In these verses, we witness David's intense grief upon learning of the death of his son Absalom. The lesson here is the depth of a parent's love and the pain of loss. Despite Absalom's rebellion, David still mourns his death, highlighting the complexity of familial relationships and the need for reconciliation and forgiveness. 2 Samuel 19. This chapter depicts David's return to Jerusalem after Absalom's rebellion. It emphasizes the importance of humility and reconciliation. David extends forgiveness and mercy to those who had opposed him, seeking to unite the kingdom once again. The lesson here is the power of forgiveness to heal Division and restore relationships, even in the midst of conflict and betrayal. Lessons learned from Acts 7, 44 to 60. In, in this passage, we witness the martyrdom of Stephen, who boldly proclaims the truth of the gospel despite facing intense opposition. The lessons include faithfulness in persecution, Stephen's unwavering commitment to Christ, even unto death, serves as an example of faithfulness in the face of persecution. It teaches us the importance of standing firm in our convictions, even when confronted with opposition and hostility. Forgiveness and Mercy Like Jesus, Stephen prays for forgiveness for his persecutors, demonstrating the transformative power of grace. 
This teaches us the radical nature of Christian love and the importance of extending forgiveness even to those who wrong us. Lessons learned from Psalm 73, verse 1 to 14. In this psalm, the psalmist grapples with the apparent prosperity of the wicked and the suffering of the righteous. The lessons include trust in God's justice. Despite the psalmist's initial doubts, he ultimately acknowledges God's sovereignty and justice. This teaches us the importance of trusting in God's timing and understanding even when circumstances seem unfair or perplexing. Focusing on eternal values, the psalmist recognizes the fleeting nature of worldly success and the importance of prioritizing spiritual wealth. This reminds us to set our hearts on eternal treasures rather than temporary pleasures, finding our ultimate satisfaction and security in God alone. Faith declarations from 2 Samuel 18, 19-33 and 2 Samuel 19. I declare that even in the midst of grief and loss, God is my comfort and strength. I trust in His sovereignty, knowing that He works all things together for good. Though my heart may ache, I choose to lean on His everlasting arms. I confess that forgiveness and reconciliation are the hallmarks of God's kingdom. I choose to extend grace and mercy to those who have wronged me, following the example of David. I trust in God's power to heal and restore broken relationships. Faith declaration from Acts 7, 44 to 60. I declare that even in the face of persecution and opposition, I will stand firm in my faith. I trust in the power of God's word to transform lives and to bring salvation. Like Stephen, I choose to forgive my enemies and entrust myself into the hands of the Lord. Faith declarations from Psalm 73 verse 1 to 14. I confess that God's ways are higher than my ways and his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Though I may be tempted to envy the apparent prosperity of the wicked, I trust in God's justice and provision. I choose to focus on eternal values and find my satisfaction in him alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you are blessed by the scriptures and you will like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you to God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleva. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.